My name is Joe Nuzzi. I'm Director of Product Research and Development for Allied Machine. Today I'm here to talk to you about multi-purpose hole making tools, time and money savers. The thing to remember here is if you can imagine it and it can be built, there's money to be saved by combining operations. Why multi-purpose hole making? Well, multi-purpose hole making reduces manufacturing time. Combining multiple operations into one reduces machine time. At the same time, this allows for increased throughput and capacity in your machine tools. Freeing up the needed tool pods at the machine, also a major benefit, okay? Um, fewer machine tools are needed when this can be done. Um, there's also reduced tool inventories. Um, wouldn't it be great to take um, three tools down to one, have less tools in your tool and your tool inventory to maintain. This productivity gains, it all translates into in cost savings. Um, let's talk about profitability and saving this money. When you look at the 100% cost of manufacturing a product, the tool cost usually um, averages somewhere between two and 6% of the total cost. Material costs usually account for about 14 to 18%. What's really the the cost consumer here is the manufacturing cost, okay? Manufacturing cost accounts for anywhere from 78 to 82 percent. When you look at the graph off to your left, you can notice if I increase tool life, all I can really gain, let's say by 30 percent, all I can really gain is a reduction of workpiece cost by only about 1 percent. The real savings comes from increasing what we call, of course, productivity or decrease in manufacturing time, if I increase productivity by 30%, you notice I can have as much as an 18% cost savings relative to the cost of manufacturing. These are the real savings. This is based on about a $65 um, an hour burden rate. Some machine tools can go upwards to a couple hundred dollars an hour. Of course, that, mean, that percentage of increase can actually go up higher than this. Let's talk about a trend in the industry. The trend in the industry, of course, is moving towards replaceable tip and or indexable tooling. Why is this occurring? Eliminate the regrinding. Eliminating regrinding reduces tool float in your organization. It can also eliminate entire regrind departments. More cost savings to the organization. Also allows for higher tool consistency. Replaceable inserts, when they're not being reground by somebody other than the manufacturer, much more consistent geometries, much more consistent results. Let's talk about eliminating tool offsets. No longer around once you have replaceable tip tooling. This reduces your setup time. It allows for less tool presetting. Again, more savings with regard to your, your, your company. And the other thing you gain, of course, from replaceable tip or I know or indexable type toolings, okay, you got greater cutting tool geometry options. Manufacturers today have an enormous amount of different options for you relative to geometries that allow you to cut just about any material that's out there today. Let's look at some examples, okay, of some multi-purpose type cutting tools. Here goes a replaceable tip drill with a chamfering insert. This tool, of course, capabilities are to drill through a hole. You want to chamfer the top of that hole at the same time. The majority of the holes that are drilled today are used for taps. And so normally, when you drill a hole, in many cases, you have to tap that hole. Of course, when you tap a hole, you need a lead-in chamfer. You can do it in two operations or use a tool similar to this and, and allow yourself to do it in one operation. When you're using one operation, of course, there's all kind of time savings. You're only stroking through the part once versus twice. What's critical to a tool of this nature? There's a few things that have to be considered when you're looking at tools like this. Of course, the materials that are being selected for this tool. The drill tip can be made out of either high speed or carbide. Some people can make them out of ceramics at the same time. A lot of the indexable inserts are all hard metal, okay? They're usually ISO, POSI, um, bolt down standard inserts, carbide in nature, all right? Speeds and feeds by which you select to run these tools, also very critical, okay? It's critical to make sure that I'm not overrunning the tool for the given parameters of each individual tool that's in the makeup. For instance, the drill that's on the front end of this tool has a replaceable tip. It's a margin tool. So the margin acting as a bearing, of course, has a limitation on exactly how fast you can run it. In this particular instance on this tool, the speed and feed, or let's say the surface footage it's run, is going to be dictated by that front end insert. 
The back end inserts, an ISO insert that can run anywhere from six to 900 feet, depending on what you're cutting. Of course, it cuts itself free. There is no margin. It has the capabilities of running higher surface footage. But it's also interesting to understand here that it may not be the minor diameter that dictates your actual speed you're going to run this tool. If there were a completely indexable tool where you had an indexable carbide drill up front and chamfer inserts in the back, now the chamfer insert in the back, okay, could be the limiting factor. It's the larger diameter versus the front end, of course. We got to make sure we do not burn these tools out. So, critical understanding, okay, of exactly what you should be looking for when you're setting these tools up. The other thing to consider is when you're doing drilling, okay, there's a lot of shock and vibration that's involved in drilling. So we want to make sure the materials we select are tough enough to do the job. I always tell people, best thing to do, of course, is use the most wear-resistant carbide your setup can withstand. Usually you start at a lower end or a tougher type material, you work up to a more wear-resistant material, and at some point in time you're going to find you meet the limit, okay, you start to chip or crack your tooling, you know you have to back down to a little bit tougher material. So it's, it's, it's crucial that we do select proper materials. Remember, these tools, of course, are a little bit more expensive, okay? They are tools that we recommend for high production type applications, and it's better to be safe with tougher grades of carbide versus something that's a little bit too brittle. Geometries, another critical aspect, okay? The nice thing about using ISO Posi bolt down inserts is the fact there are a number of geometries available out there to cut all different types of materials. If it's an ISO pocket, you've got 20 or 30 manufacturers you can go to to try and find a geometry that will actually function in your material. So I recommend, of course, try to use a geometry that always creates the smallest possible chip so it has an easy chance to get out of the hole. Remember when you're drilling, it's critical not only that you form a chip, but number two, you have to make sure that you actually evacuate that chip out of the hole. If it's not evacuated, of course, what will happen is you'll pack that chip and you'll actually destroy your tooling. So I recommend highly, of course, that chip formation is established, okay? Proper speeds and feeds, of course, are critical to allow that to happen, as well as the tool geometry. Let's look at another example. Here goes a taper drill. Here's your drill designed to go in, of course, drill a hole and then rough out a taper, okay, for a tapered hole. Um, the overlap on them inserts are usually not conducive, let's say, to finish that hole. Many people will go into a hole like this and use a finished reamer in order to clean that hole up. But you can usually rough that out. Um, what's critical here is when you consider the small angle on the taper, you, know, you understand that for a given feed rate, you're going to have a very small chip load. So an extremely sharp cutting edge is required for a tool of this nature. Okay, so keep that in mind when you're selecting your cutting edge geometry, in specific your edge prep. We showed you some form type toolings in the previous examples. Of course, at this point in time, what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk to you about a tool, of course, that only is actually drilling a hole, but one can consider this a multi-purpose tool. It has a chrome helix with chrome, cool, uh, chrome fed uh, bearing area and a customer defined shank on it. This tool is actually designed to balance a crank. The idea behind the back end having a chrome bearing surface, okay, is to allow this tool to actually hold true position. This type of tool was designed to start on a parting line, okay? If we didn't have it, um, let's say, confined by a bushing, it would have a tendency to want to walk off on you. You'd never get the hole where you wanted the hole to be, okay? The front end, of course, you notice is also a bearing surface. We want to try to maintain a good straight hole as we're drilling that hole. And number two, we put a helix in it, of course, because this was a low coolant application. And of course, the helix allows us to help auger that chip out of the hole. So although this tool looks like it's just nothing more than a drilling tool, it is multi-purpose, it is multi-functioning. The other thing you'll notice towards the middle of the tool body, where of course the bushing is going to be um, engaging that particular body, you notice a couple weep holes. Then weep holes are actually cooling holes that are being fed by the center hole that goes down through the center of this drill. Designed, of course, in order to lubricate that bushing. So at that point, as we're running higher and higher surface footages, we won't burn down surfaces up. Let's look at another example. Another tool that looks like it's merely just drilling a hole, but in reality, it's doing a lot more. Okay, not only is this tool drilling a very deep hole, 
but this tool is also really designed to drill a very straight hole. One of the things about, let's say, indexable or replaceable tip type tooling is this type of tooling, of course, is really designed, you know, to drill. It's, it's ground extremely exacting, so it will drill very straight holes. Now, that's pending whether or not your material is very consistent. Most materials that might contain harder soft spots, unfortunately, allow a drill to want to lead off and start to veer off in, in a direction. If we need to guarantee that, these are the type of tool bodies, of course, or the type of drills we need. We need some kind of margin surface, which you see on the front end of this tool, that's going to guide this tool holder straight, guide the drill straight, allow you to drill a straight hole, usually within about 5,000 per foot. Okay? Um, if you've got a counter-rotating application, such as a gun drilling application, a gun drill type machine tool, at that point, you'll be able to hold it usually within about 1,000 over a foot. There goes another type of multifunctional tool. Hey, this is a replaceable tip drill with a chamfering ring. There's a number of companies out there that offer chamfering rings today. What's nice about this tool is not only do you have the, the ability to have a range of diameters that fits in that holder body, but you also have a chamfer ring that allows you to chamfer the top of that hole. And of course, what's also nice about this is that chamfer ring can also be adjusted. So at that point, you can adjust for different lengths that you need to drill your hole. Um, we have these products available in, in various sizes to fit various holder bodies, okay, and like I said, there are other manufacturers out there that do offer these type of tools. Let's look at some other examples. We talked about form type tools, and we talked about step type tools. Let's look at some form inserts. There's a number of capabilities when you talk about form inserts that all allow you to reduce the number of operations that you have in your cutting process. You'll notice the one up in the upper left, which is a ball radius type TA insert. It actually is designed to drill the hole at the same time, leave a large radius at the bottom of that hole. Tool just below, it's a spur point. Ideal tool when you're in, let's say, a screw machine type application, it allows you to go in and create a spot and actually face the, 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 your bar end off. You'll see a drill and countersink type tool just below that to leave that form in the bottom of a hole. Just to the right of that, there's a multi-step form TA insert. That one, of course, is designed to do multiple forms in the bottom of a hole. Usually not recommended to tape that type of tool, which starts to get very expensive, into a part from solid. Usually wind up finished with these type of tools and we rough with another tool up in front. You see a double angle just above that. A lot of times these are a lot, these are being produced so that we can create the chamfer at the top of the hole or the countersink and then follow the center of that up with another drill in order to drill through. Again, usually another tool you'll find in a screw machine type application. And again, these type of these type of tools are designed to eliminate operations in your manufacturing process. Another complex form type insert. It's insert here creates a spot face, a counterbore, and then a counter sink at the bottom of your hole. It's time to start thinking, how can I start combining some of my operations? A lot of these operations are being done today with a lot of circular interpolation or multiple tools going into the same hole. It's all wasted time. This type of tooling can be made from various materials. It can be made from powder metallurgy type technology. It can be made from carbides. It can be made from cermets. It can be made from diamond PCDs. The other nice thing about this being it's an insert type design, of course, it's very coatable. There's a number of various wear resistant coatings and when you have such a small insert, the coating capabilities become a lot more cost effective. Again, more cost savings in your system. Here's an interesting product. There's more and more products being shown today that are, of course, multi-purpose wraparound or what's known as full form type inserts. The, the, um, the tool that's on the left hand side is actually designed to go in and do an internal chamfer, an external chamfer, and a spot face to a wrist pin. The drills actually, or the, the hole's actually been um, forged into position. All they want to do is finish up the ODs. When you look at the tool just to the right of it, we're drilling a hole in an aluminum um, automotive rim. Okay, so we're providing the through hole, and then the ball seat, of course, is being done so at that point, you know, you can um, put your lug nut on it. And you can notice on the far right, you see the, 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 the amount of different forms that can be done is phenomenal. And again, combining operations, reducing your cost. A lot of these forms in the past have been done with circular interpolations or some very expensive type of operations that go in and do, you know, um, contour type work. But this allows you to go in and do this in one shot.